Okay, so now we're really flying high. What better time to pick up some top tier tips and speak to one of the most pivotal people in behind the scenes at Strappy. In fact, we, we would say his Strappy royalty, the CTO himself, Jim Laurie. Hello everyone, and thanks for the introduction. Well, I'm Jim Laurie, co-founder and chief user success officer at Strappy. Today, I will talk about 10 key concepts tips that will help you in your understanding of Strapi. We have just 10 minutes, so around one minute per tip, time to get started. Let's start with the architecture of a Strapi project. In a Strapi project, you will find an API folder. This folder contains your collection and single types. A content type is composed of various elements, routes, controllers, models, and services. Controllers and services are empty files. It works with a blueprint system, the core of Strapi manages the default logic. You can find a components folder. This will contain all components of your application. Components or data structure that are reusable in your content types. Then you have the config folder. It will contain some configurations like the database configuration and other stuff. There is also the query system to mention as key concept, but I will talk about it in another tip. After, you can find other folders, concepts that exist in Strapi, policies, or functions that could be applied before controller actions, middlewares to interact with the Node.js middleware stack, plugins, we will talk about them later, and also they can be customized thanks to the customization concept. When you are requesting your Strapi application, it goes through a multitude of middleware. The first step for Strapi will be to parse and understand the request. We use some Koa middleware to do that. If you created some middleware, they will be applied at this moment. Then we will match the root definition that corresponds to the request you did. If you define policies in your root definition, Strapi will execute them. And only after that, Strapi will call the controller function. The default controller function call the related service function, which in turn calls the related query function to get the data. The query function will call the database and return the data. At this moment, if you set some lifecycle functions, it will call these functions. Then all the stack will move the content up for the request response. And tada, you have your data in the request response. In the previous tip, we saw the default behavior when you are doing a request. The idea now is to show you that you can completely customize this behavior to add your custom logic, business logic. So the first thing is to define the function that you want to update. You can update the find, find one, count, create, update or delete function. Then open the controller.js file, copy the default function from the documentation, Pass it in your controller file and add your custom logic. This customization will be applied only for routes that call this controller function. And it's exactly the same for services. An interesting thing to know is that you can customize your content contribution experience to make it more friendly. When you are visiting the create or update view of an entry, you will find a configure the view button. This interface will let you customize the edition interface, reordering different fields to have a better experience, renaming labels to have something more user-friendly, adding description for a better understanding of the impact of fields. You can also block the edition or remove some field if you want. A cool concept is about the lifecycle functions. These functions are defined at the model level. When a model will enter in action, because of a query, these lifecycle functions will be called. Let's see how to use these functions with the following example. You want to generate a slug for your article collection type that contains a stringified version of the title concatenated with the creation date. To do that, you will have to create a before create function for your article collection type. When an article will be created, this function will be called just before the creation. In the admin panel, we developed the role-based access control feature to help administrators access specific content based on their roles. But for users of your application, 
this fixture doesn't exist by default. Let's see a use case to fetch only the data that has a relation with the user that executes the request. Here we have articles related to an author, so a user. And when the author is logging, they will be able to fetch only their articles. We will update the find controller function to force a filter by the author ID that executes the request. You can apply the same logic to restrict users to update their uh, own profile, only that. For now, we don't have custom fields that would let you connect a strapy entry to a third party provider to aggregate data. In our example, we manage products in our Strapi application and we want to create a link to Shopify because all the pricing information, stocks, etc. are managed there. When we fetch our product through the Strapi API, we want to have the data from Shopify. The idea is simple, adding a field to store the Shopify ID of the product you want to create a relation with. Then, on the after fetch lifecycle functions, you get the ID of your Shopify item and you fetch the Shopify data that you will aggregate in your Strapi entry. Sometimes in your application, you want to fetch a set of data that match a specific filter and this will never change during all the life of your application. In that case, you can have a dirty URL like this one with a lot of URL parameters. Let's see how we can clean that. In that case, you can experiment with the fact that with Strapi, you can create custom routes to have one clean URL to fetch a filtered data and apply this filter directly in your backend side. Sometimes, for an architectural perspective, performance management, you may want to split the admin panel, the front-end part, which is a React application, from the API part, which is an OGS application. The admin panel doesn't need to scale and will be hosted in a completely different way than the API that needs to be configured to scale properly. It's not really well known, but it's completely possible to do that. The admin panel generates a build that is served when you are starting your Strapi application. But it exists a config that lets you split both to hold them independently and let you have something like admin.myapp.com hosted on Netlify because it's a React uh, build, for example, and api.myapp.com hosted on DigitalOcean or AWS or another solution. And last but not least, plugins. Plugins are the system that let you extend and empower your applications. That lets you create a new section in your admin panel to integrate some custom business logic on your backend side and everything managed from one admin interface. It's really powerful. To keep it short, I will redirect to Virtus Lab, who created multiple plugins that add features in Strapi. They are doing just an amazing job. Adding an audit log feature, a comment system, a navigation for the creation of your menu, and others. And here it is, we covered 10 tips and key concepts of Strapi. Thanks for listening. Thanks again, Jim. Um, I really love this talk in particular. Um, some really great tips in there, um, especially sh building on the talk previously from Scott about how to really get under the hood with Strapi and use the services and hooks and controllers. Um, I love the, also the Shopify example, how using just an ID to asynchronously fetch data from another source and inject it in your Strapi project. That's just absolutely brilliant. And that's the kind of thing that you can achieve with, um, with hooks, you know, on create or before create or that kind of thing. You can use that to create a side effect, call a function somewhere else, fetch data from another source, and then still use it within your Strapi project. That for me is absolutely brilliant. Also, I love the example, even though it's quite simple, I love the example of the, the Slugify option to create a, a slug for each post. Uh, this is a common feature that you see in, in WordPress sites. When you create a post, you get like a slug automatically. So it's quite nice to have the walkthrough of how to do that using before create hooks. So yeah, brilliant talk. Really appreciate that. Um, this is actually one I'm probably going to watch again. So really good stuff.